so firstly, uh, I'd like, like to thank the ATN for the opportunity to come speak to you. And I should acknowledge the Minister for giving a, a very nice introduction to our, our project. Um, so uh, as you would understand, so I'm from the University of South Australia. The project I'm going to talk to you about today has been an ongoing collaboration with SMR Automotive. Um, this has been in partnership with the Automotive CRC as well. Um, the project I'll talk about today is in the previous iteration of the Auto CRC, um, but it's important to point out that we have repeat business in this space. So currently, and I'll touch on it at the end, we're two and a half to three years into a new project with SMR, developing new stuff, and in the future, the best thing is, is we will not talk about plastic mirrors again because we will talk about the new value add high, um, high end product that's being developed. So what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is something simple, it's this, it, it's a plastic mirror. Uh, those of you that have kids uh, but, um, would know that you can get plastic mirrors on your Barbie cars and those kind of things. Um, what separates this from those products is, is that this is a simple piece of plastic that can now withstand being put outside for long periods of time it doesn't fade, it doesn't crack, it doesn't fall off. It can withstand temperature cycling. So we're talking about vehicles that need to go out to the outback of Australia or parked outside in Sweden in winter. Um, people cleaning these things with all kinds of chemicals such as battery acid and those kind of things. This passes every automotive test. It's the first one to do that. It's the only plastic version that can be supplied on new vehicles. Um, so this is, a, I guess, a, a long story um, over a, a longer period of time, and I, I'm only going to touch on why we were doing this. The aim is, is to replace glass with plastic. The, the, it's a very, very simple thing. Um, it's to improve safety, so plastic is shatterproof. It's half the weight of glass. And what I'll start to touch on and where we're going is the fact that once you change from glass to plastic, you can start to do new things. So rather than competing on effectively what's a commodity, so if you think of a glass mirror, it's produced quite cheap, this has to compete with that on very small margins. But we've been opening the door to new things uh, that you can do once you can start cre to create different shapes, change the coatings and so on. Um, the, the work that we have done at the at UniSA has been focusing on the coatings. So what you see here, I'm assuming everybody can see that this is a reflective surface. You can touch it, feel it. It's 40 nanometers thick, so about a thousand times thinner than your hair. Um, there's a lot of research and development that goes in behind this, the, the coating structure, how you put it together to make it survive. Um, more importantly, what I want to touch on though, is some of the things that you can't pick up in our publications or our patents as to why the collaboration led to this kind of product. Um, so first point that I wanted to touch on is that, uh, as I pointed out before, this was a collaborative project through the Automotive CRC. So here we've had investment uh, from UniSA, the federal government through the Auto CRC and SMR. And so in that respect, everybody's got skin in the game, to, to, to put it in, in those those particular terms. That is, is that everybody has a vested interest in something coming out at the end. It's not just industry paying the university to do some research and the researcher doesn't feel accountable or responsible to deliver at the end. Um, also, the way the project was run, and, and for those in, in industry, it's a pretty straightforward thing, is well-defined quarterly milestones and targets. Um, Having worked in private industry and been on the other side of the fence, um, moving into the ac academic space, there, there are only a handful of people that truly understand what delivering on milestones actually is. Um, and, and so I'm proud to say that in, a, in that particular project, uh, which was a three year project, we hit every single milestone on time, on budget. So far in our new project with SMR Automotive, over three years, we have done the same. Uh, most of the time we'll deliver ahead of schedule. Um, and that's really come from the fact that you spend the time getting things right at the beginning so that there's no, no curveballs halfway through a project. Um, 
the second point I wanted to point out is, is that it, this particular project was never run as industry and university separate. Um, we had one, one project team. Um, the beautiful thing about this is, is SMR's facility in, is based in Adelaide, it's based at Lonsdale, which is on the southern side of the CBD. Our campus is on the northern side of the CBD, we're about an hour's drive apart. We had regular fortnightly meetings, and they were the scheduled meetings, face to face, either in the manufacturing facility or in the research labs. On top of that, we had regular, spontaneous meetings. Um, in that respect, we, we always functioned as one team. Um, also, on top of that, as part of the project, and we're doing that in our new project, we actually employed SMR engineers at the university. The, the beautiful thing there was is that our research team did not have a history of working in the automotive manufacturing sector. So when we talk about setting up a manufacturing facility, setting up a manufacturing process, hitting specification, our research team didn't have that experience and that's what SMR brought with them on a daily basis. Um, conversely, we were starting to look at how we change the way we actually do the development and instill some of the research methodology into the engineering guys. Importantly, at the end of the project, all those SMR employees move back to the manufacturing facility and they are now the ones running production. So when we come to troubleshooting in production, these guys actually have intimate knowledge of how the machines work and the science behind what's going on. It doesn't always solve the problem, but at least it gives us a start. And then the third point here is just the project flexibility. So I'm, I'm proud to say that SMR were co-authors on our scientific publications and that they drove some aspects of the research. Conversely, at the university, we engaged in a lot of the manufacturing and product development that will never turn up in a patent or in a publication. Um, building big metal cylinders that get shipped off to Germany for um, equipment acceptance tests um, we have a test facility where we do accelerated weather testing, abrasion testing. These are things that uh, a standard academic lab wouldn't do because it doesn't result in the typical kind of metric. Um, so it, it, it's nice in that respect. What has this delivered, this particular project? Um, we've had high-skilled jobs created in South Australia. That, that's an absolutely important one. Um, to date, and that, that number's still pretty low, there's been over one and a half million mirrors manufactured in the Lonsdale facility and exported. So this particular product here is off the F-250 pickup truck in the US. Um, so far, based on SMR's information, there's been one warranty return out of those one and a half million. Um, there's also, and, and this is the important thing about moving forward, there's an advanced manufacturing facility set up in the Lonsdale um, factory. Um, it's a change in the, in the way that SMR manufacture their products. Um, as you would indicate from this picture, there's only a handful of people working in clean rooms. It's a different style of manufacturing. We've done a lot of work with helping SMR set up this facility and, and how to come over some of the hurdles of changing the way they do business. What I want to touch on finally is it's not just about this. This isn't a one-off. Okay, so here we're talking about competing against a glass mirror, okay, and as the price of glass fluctuates, the viability of this moves up and down. But if you now take a step back and think, I've got a decorative or an optical coating on a piece of plastic, where else may I use that? And so just to give you an idea, and uh, if you quickly look at this, uh, my attempt at making a movie, I, I understand that given... Uh, portability onto different computers, my movie probably wouldn't have worked. So um, this is representing where we're going now. <clears throat> so here we're talking about no longer the mirror, but the housing of that mirror. You can start to play with the optical properties. So rather than having your side turn indicator being obvious, it's actually hidden behind the, the reflective coating. So when you turn on the indicator, it appears through the coating. Um, now that's great. We're now moving to autonomous vehicles, so who needs a side mirror and indicator anyway? Um, so we're now helping SMR branch out into other areas where we're no longer just competing against a glass product, we're making products that no one else in the world can do. Without going into too much detail, SMR's 
in final negotiations on about five separate contracts with global car manufacturers. So there's no dependence on locally Ford, Holden and Toyota. We're talking about reaching global markets now. And then just to change it up a little bit, another area that we've moved into is helping another automotive manufacturer, Precision Components. Uh, they do all of the pressed metal um, parts for Holden, Toyota and Ford, and we're helping them diversify into renewable energy. So this is where we take a lightweight, durable mirror and now scale it up for concentrated solar power. We've, in, in this particular case, it's a slightly different model as how we're moving forward. It's a consortium of companies, including UniSA, that have formed a new company. Uh, this company is 18 months old and we've already manufactured parts to deliver to Japan. So there's already traction moving in that space. So just to give you an idea of where it's going. So in summary, I think that the main, one of the main things out of this project is, is having, we've been fortunate to have a research team that's been flexible to engage in things above and beyond just the research side of things. Um, and the curiosity to understand how business works. So finding out what the drivers are for that business and being able to tailor our research to deliver against not just a product, but how that business operates. Um, these two businesses operate very, very differently. So the way we approach our research has to be completely different. Um, it, it's not just a one, one shoe fits all. So I'll leave it there and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Cheers.